I would never encourage somebody that met and wrote to each other to seal the deal without meeting and without seeing each other in their family environments. Again, for that issue I was referring to earlier, how does this person treat their mother? How do they interact with their sisters? How do they interact with their brothers, the younger, the older? All those things are really big windows into a person's treatment of you as a spouse. Definitely a huge issue and a great opportunity for you because you haven't gambled anything in Islam. You haven't um, compromised your moral values if you've spent time with another Muslim's family, right? You haven't spent time alone with them. You haven't become physically involved with them. You haven't done all of those things. You've just spent time with another human being's family to learn more about how they engage and how they interact. And that's incredibly important. And I encourage you to do that as the next step. Find out and meet the family. You know that movie, Meet the Parents. They weren't kidding, it's important. And I always say this to my oldest daughter, that even if you meet the family, and even if you've read about them, and even if they've written to you, and you found out what, they, what their values allegedly are on paper, I would personally not marry someone unless I got into a stress stressful situation with them and found out how they react. Because you know what? Some people can put their best foot forward in many circumstances, but when there's a stressful situation, you find out that they have a terrible temper or that they treat people really bad around them. The person whose flight is late. This is, these are the people you have to watch. In the airport line, Watch how the people, one after the other, treat that per poor person at the other end of the desk, who is not their fault that the flight was late. And trust me, the, worst, the last thing they want is for that flight to be delayed or late, right? They want nothing more than to have things go smoothly. But you'll see, some people take it out on those people behind the counter. This would be not the person to get in a marriage with, because that's going to extrapolate into home life. Trust me, it will. If they cannot be respectful to other human beings in stressful circumstances, Chances are, under a marriage circumstance, that will also extrapolate into your life. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Somebody wants somebody whose deen is so much embedded in their life that they can control their temper. And the big thing that Muslims are supposed to control, the tongue, right? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that if somebody has a bad temper, they're not one of us. They're not a believer. It's, it's not comprehensible that someone who has Islam as a deen can also have a bad temper, an ill temper, and treat other people badly because of it. It's not a possibility to be pious and to have that. They don't go together. It's like oil and vinegar. They just, they don't mix. When you shake them up, they try to mix, but they always come apart, don't they, in the end? So look for temper and look for that in stressful circumstances. You can do that Islamically still by spending time with the family, maybe traveling with the family or traveling with other people that are your age. You know, nothing like traveling to, to put a stressful environment or nothing like uh, maybe watching somebody else's kids to uh, put you in a stressful environment or to build a project or do a project together. And I wrote here, arrange an activity together. Let's see you arrange a dinner party for someone, right? You're thinking of marrying somebody, you say let's have some friends over. You arrange a dinner party together and you collaborate about it. Boy, oh boy, you will learn more in those three hours of preparing that meal and getting the guests there and arranging that than you will learn from writing to someone for 3,000 years, I am telling you, absolutely. That sort of thing, arranging an event or doing something together where you have to collaborate will give you so much more information and will protect you. And I'm, and I'm gonna say I'm a little bit gender biased here because I'm a sister and I know sisters, you have a lot on the line. Brothers, you have a lot on the line as well, but sisters, you know, the potential for maltreatment is very real and very, very hard to contend with. Pray always that your family is a good support network with them and that you stay close. Don't isolate yourself from your other sisters and from your family because that, that support network is important in a society like this that doesn't have a large family unit that's very close, that's a check and balance for people's behavior within a marriage. Here, you get married and you move to an apartment, don't you? You go off on your own and nobody ever sees what goes on behind closed doors. The family rarely visits, you're not together too much, and suddenly there's opportunity for a lot of things to go bad and for nobody to come to your assistance in need. In need. So certainly in this society, keep your support network, excuse me, support network around you. And I relate the one hadith that the best among you is the one who is kindest to their wife from um, Bukhari Sharif.